Your lights are on, but nobody's home. How long will your plants survive? Well, the short answer is two or three days. I'm talking about hand-watered, fast-growing plants in pots filled with restrictive growing media like stone wool, soil, or cocoa coir. They won't last this long if they're pot-bound or if they're suffering dry, arid conditions that pull more moisture out of your plants. Oh no, then it could be game over in 24 hours. Okay, if your babies are still in nursery or in intermediate pots, then you should aim to transplant them into larger containers filled with moist growing media as close to the day of your departure as possible. This is because a young growing plant bedding into a new pot or grow block can and should be left at least around four of five days after transplanting before you water it again. So if you can time your trip to cover this period, it can work out really well. But what if you need to go away for longer, say a week or two? What can you do? The obvious solution is to set up a dripper system. Put your plants into a tray, reservoir underneath, pump digital timer, away you go. Check out my other video on DIY dripper systems here. It's easy and you'll get your life back. <laughs> there are many other automatic growing systems out there too. Flood and drain tables and various modular systems. You've also got passive wicking systems like the auto pot that feed your plants from the bottom up. No need for any pumps or timers. Then there's NFT and bubble bucket DWC systems, even aeroponics. The list goes on. However, common to all these systems is some form of nutrient reservoir, and of course, without anyone there to top it up, it's going to get low. Furthermore, in nutrient recirculating hydroponic systems, your solution will become more and more concentrated while your pH will tend to drift upwards. This can lead to less than ideal conditions for your plants. Now, obviously, larger reservoirs are less susceptible to these issues, but if a large tank isn't practical day to day, then you might consider this temporary measure. Place a second reservoir adjacent to it. It doesn't have to be the same size but it does need to be of similar height. Fill up the second reservoir with top-up solution. For recirculating systems, I make this half normal strength. If you live in a hard water area where your pH tends to drift up to 7, a crafty little technique is to adjust the pH of your top-up solution down to around 5, as this will naturally offset the drift. For wicking systems that don't recirculate, just fill up with your regular nutrient solution. The siphon itself is easily created with three lengths of mainline irrigation tubing and two elbows. The trick is to fully submerge the tubing and wiggle it around a bit so that no air remains inside. Then holding your thumbs over each end while still submerged, quickly lift it out and invert it so that both ends are submerged like this. As your primary reservoir's nutrient solution goes down, the siphoning effect evens out the levels. Da da! You see, siphoning can work for you, not against you. <laughs> Okay. I don't recommend this technique for flood and drain tables as levels can go down a lot with each irrigating, meaning that, you know, you could end up overflowing your primary reservoir. It's better for NFT drippers and wicking systems. There's really no limit to how many reservoirs you can daisy chain together like this. You just need to arrange a siphon between each adjacent reservoir. I prefer the siphon technique to float valves and pumps as it's a lot simpler. Next tip, raise your grow lights up a foot or so to give your plants some growing room. Sheesh. If that's not possible, consider bending or pruning to lower your plant height. It's amazing how quickly your plants can go from this to this. <sighs> If you're growing flowering or fruiting plants, it's preferable to get them fully transitioned before going away. Inspect really closely for pests. You should be doing this anyway, but check the undersides of your leaves, especially in any hard to reach spots. Vigilance before you depart will reduce the risk of coming back to a major infestation. It's a good idea to take some cuttings from your favorite plants as a sort of genetic insurance policy. Just pop them into an arrow cloner on the day of your departure, leave it in the corner of your grow room, and they should be okay for a few weeks. If you have to regularly spend days away from your grow room and run recirculating hydroponic systems, then consider investing in a pH controller, which will automatically adjust your pH for you. Many growers think pH controllers are just for the pros. Wrong! Even a beginner could set up this Blue Lab pH controller in under 10 minutes. Next, environmental controllers. Such a good idea! Whether you're planning to go on vacation or not, the Cronus, Saturn, and Hyperion, oh, Respawn Station not included series, sorry, of controllers by Titan controls will handle everything from switching your fans on when it gets too hot or humid or switching them off and powering up a heater if it's too cold. They can handle CO2 and dehumidifiers too. Beyond all of this, there's automatic top-up pumps and nutrient dosers, but we'll cover that another time. Let me know your tips for leaving your plants unattended or any questions you have in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. It's free and it really butters my parsnips. So thank you in advance and respawn!